There's four kinds of questions in the course book. The first kind is a multiple choice question like the one you see here, question number one. All the questions start this way with a Q and then the question number, and they also include a little bit of information when you mouse over the question mark. In this case, it's telling you that the value of this question is two points and that it'll be scored as soon as you click the submit answer button. Multiple choice questions also um, are nice to you and tell you how many answers are expected here. So the kinds of answers that we have in the course book are short answers, no essays, fill in the blanks, file uploads, no matching, and multiple choice. And if I click submit answer here, it will um, evaluate the answer that I gave and give me a little bit of feedback. So let's let that happen. So you can see here in the screen that's coming up that the correct answers are in green and there's a key that tells you um, more specifically what the answer is. So that's how multiple choice questions work. The next time, the next kind of question is a um, uh, is a fill in the blank question. These questions aren't there to test your knowledge per se. They're there to give you practice. So the answers, if you mouse over the little question mark here, as you can see, are given. So the answer here is topics. Um, and in addition to uh, in addition to giving you practice, they also are there to extend your knowledge. So oftentimes in one of these fill-in-the-blank questions, you'll see new concepts, and specifically the key parts of those new concepts coming up in these little type-in boxes. So type topics inside um, the course book provide the concepts of the course. Exercises uh, allow you to practice the concepts, and um, projects are extended exercises. Now if I get it wrong, so instead of saying projects, I say project, I submit my answer, it'll tell me that was a wrong answer and give me, an, and give me a chance to correct it. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't get full points on all of these fill-in-the-blank questions because the answers are provided to you and if you do happen to type it incorrectly one time, uh, you can go back and fix your answer and uh, and eventually get all the points for all of the fill-in questions. So again, these questions aren't to uh, test your knowledge, they're really to get you to practice on the key concepts. And you'll see the key concepts repeating over and over again throughout the, um, throughout the course book as you use it, and hopefully by the end of um, your use of the course book, you'll see that, uh, uh, that, that these concepts are becoming more and more fluid. That's the idea. Okay. So we got that wrong. I can change it from project to projects. Oops. And the next time we'll get it right. Moving along, the next kind of the next kind of question is a short answer question. In the short answer questions, they're usually there to get you to type in some particular HTML um, element or or XML command or uh, something, some piece of syntax, some piece of of um, of specific typing that you'll need to learn about in the course. Sometimes they're just um, they're just short answers. Uh, oops, I guess I didn't capitalize exercises here, and um, we'll just leave it at that. In this case, we're going to read the question. There could be multiple in short answer question. The form of the answer is strictly enforced. However, there could be multiple correct answers or multiple ways to phrase a right answer. So this is the hardest type of question for the application to grade. Let's say. And we're going to try that. If I want more instructions about how to fill out this question or how to fill out the answer, I can click on the little plus minus button here and it'll give me more instructions. Then I'll just submit that answer. If it's incorrect, I'll get uh, multiple chances to um, I'll get multiple chances to resubmit that until I get it right. Um, you may find that you come up with an answer that seems ex in, uh, totally right, and that's the case in any of these uh, questions, and it's not being accepted as the expected answer. And so if, if you find that to be the case, let's talk about it, and maybe you've come up with a new answer that I hadn't anticipated. Okay, so we did multiple choice questions, fill in the blank questions, and um, short answer questions. The final and probably most um, important kind of question that you'll work with in the course book is the file upload question. In a file upload question, you're asked to construct a particular file. Um, I, it'll usually, well not usually, it will always in our course be either an XML instance, schema, or transform, and you don't quite know what those things are yet, but you certainly will. So you construct the file, you upload that file, and then a, a set of evaluation criteria are immediately applied to that file, and you're scored. 
In this case, the maximum score here, we can mouse over this question and see that there's a value of 2. And when you upload the file, you'll get a maximum of 2 points. We can see here what the, what the evaluation criteria are. Um, the, there's one, going to be one tag in this file, and it must be capitalized correctly, open and closed correctly, and be the only element in the file. So this particular question asks us to create this file that has only one thing in it, um, one line, and that line says this is a test. When we've created that file, which I have behind the scenes, we click upload the file. We'll get a new screen where, um, uh, where, we're, where we're able to, to locate the file on our hard drive and upload it. I click the browse button here and I should come to a place where I'm able to find that um, this is a test file. Uh, whoops. I'm looking for a file called trial upload. Go down here to trial upload. Upload that file. And now the application is evaluating the file that I just uploaded against the evaluation criteria that are listed in the screen there. And in a moment, we'll go back to that screen and we'll see how we did. Okay. It's being a little slow because I have the video recorder turned on and that has priority for processing on this computer. Okay, so notice one thing is that the, it, it, the file lit up. I can click on this file and download it again or open it in, um, in Oxygen, uh, which is our XML editor. So all of the files that you upload are immediately downloadable again. Um, and, in, and also, it's been evaluated. Notice um, it's been awarded two points out of two. And we have the point value here and the points awarded. So we got full credit for that upload. Final kind of question is called an automatic trigger question. Um, and the automatic trigger questions don't require you to upload anything um, additional. They work off the files that you've already uploaded. In this case, we're going to take an XML file and validate it against a schema file. Now, again, you don't entirely know what those things mean yet, but you, you, will, you will know those things in turn. And what you need to know right now is that this kind of question evaluates immediately. Um, it, may have some, uh, it may have some points uh, associated with it, or it may not have points associated with it. It may have a whole set of evaluation criteria that are applied, um, that are applied to this sort of question but you don't have to upload anything additional to make the question happen. Okay, so those are our, those are our um, different kinds of questions. We have the file upload questions. We have the um, short answer questions. We have the um, fill in the blank questions. And we have the multiple choice questions. Again, if you come across an answer that you feel is correct and wasn't evaluated that way, get in touch and we'll talk about it.